inputs you're going to need to then solve the other uh, determined outputs. Okay, so usually remember uh, Grubler, uh, you know, said, um, you know, we really only care about mechanism mobility of one because we only want one motor driving the whole thing and we don't like two degree of freedom joints and so he just left J1s and he did his equation from Kutzbach. You know, so you're starting to see why hopefully um, one, why the field of mechanisms is so important and why it's so important that a mechanism be something with a closed vector loop so you can set vector loop equations to zero and then why you know most mechanisms are just planar and have uh, one input and mobility of one and why that's something people would like to focus on okay but but just know that uh, you can analyze these mechanisms you can know if they have mobility of greater than one and you would do this analysis with multiple inputs as many as m the mobility okay okay but anyway that was a little tangent uh, hopefully was valuable there but um, okay let's let's give you the answer here okay so uh, w you know um, let's uh, draw these um, uh, okay let's let's draw the um, vectors here so this is this is a point that connects one okay and uh, and we, we would you know, well to label this R1, um, you know, we would know the distance between these two things. They're not moving. Remember, these are not sliding prism joints. These are fixed to the ground. And so this is, this is basically just capturing the ground. We would know its length and we'd know its angle. It looks like it wouldn't be zero. It would be, you know, there's the horizontal. It would be up because there's some kind of offset. But it doesn't matter. We could measure it with a protractor. It wouldn't, wouldn't change as theta 2 changes. So this is just a fixed thing. That's a good vector to use. Again, another obvious one is point to the pins. So, so this is obvious number one, this is obvious number two, and it's well named two because it's two points on two and it would capture it. Okay, and now you're probably gonna wanna point to this point. That's usually a good rule. Um, and sure, let's, let's try it. Let's do point from this to this. Now, the question is why did we name this uh, three? Why did we name that three? Um, well, uh, okay, well, that, that is a, a point um, that is going to describe, remember, link three is this body right there, okay? And as it moves in this slot, okay, you could kind of imagine, first of all, this pin right here is obviously on three. It's also on two. It pins the two together. Um, but this point is, is going to um, essentially... Uh, move with this slot, right? Um, and so, so um, you could imagine this encompassing uh, this this uh, this this point there, and that would track how three would move. Okay. Um, you could also think of this point on four as well, because you know this. If you move four, you're going to be moving the slot on four. Like obviously, if I took a a link and I cut a hole out of it and I threw the link, the hole would move with it. And if the center of the hole's slot was this point, that point's going to move with, with four as well. So we could connect this point, which is obviously on four, to that point. And I hope you could see, I mean, may, maybe before we, I convince you more of our three, let's convince you of our four. This point is on four and this point's on four. So as this moves, that captures four, okay? But you could just connect these guys and it would clearly, you know, th as this guy rotates, you can imagine if there's a, an appendage coming off of three around there, because it's forced to move in this circular slot, that point will just stay fixed on three as this kind of rotates. And you could see that this could kind of encompass that whole link and capture the rotation of three. It's a little tricky to see, but um, if you, you know, imagine this any shape, just have this stick in a slot and then have it encompass that point you would see because the slot's fixed to rotate, and that's the center of rotation, that point would just stay still with respect to four, and this guy would move and would capture R3. Okay, so you'd have to label it R3. Someone might be, you know, a lot of students would, would find that, yeah, let's connect that to that, and they do that, but they might think to name this, let's name this R8 or something that's not a link on here, um, thinking, well, it's one of these vectors that's not associated with a link but it certainly is associated with the link. It captures the rotation of three, okay? Uh, with respect to four as it moves inside of four, okay? 
and it's a little tricky to see, but this vector loop should work, okay? And, you know, we do have as many vectors as we have links, which, you know, is not always necessary. Um, sometimes you have less, which was the case with our last example here. This has four links, but we have only three uh, vectors. And sometimes you have uh, many more vectors than you have links. So don't think you have to have as many vectors as there are links. Okay, but in this case we happen to. Okay, and we're going to start... It, let's see, it looks like we started uh, here, and we're going to walk this direction. And in this case, it's kind of not clockwise or counterclockwise because you're just going to follow the vectors. Um, but, you know, we're going to go this way. So we're going to start here, and we're going to do plus R1, plus R2, plus R3, minus R4, because we're going from the head to the tail. Okay? So there you see that. Okay? And now let's go through and see what we know. Okay, so like I said, we know R1 and we know its angle. Okay, it's just fixed on the ground and we could measure it with a protractor. Or basically, kind of the better way to think about it is neither of those will change as theta 2 changes. And remember, theta 2 here is the tail of R2. Horizontal to there, there's theta 2. As theta 2 changes, if you put a motor on there to remove this, uh, neither of these is going to change. Okay, so you, you know them. Uh, the length of R2, you know as well, it's not going to change. The input, or sorry, the theta 2 is the input, okay? That's the thing the motor knows, okay? Uh, if you did Kuzbog on this, you'd find it's mobility of 1, so you're just going to have one input, it's that, okay? All right, and then R3, aha, uh -huh. so R3, here's its tail. You would do horizontal line there all the way around there, that would be R3. Does that change as you change theta 2? Well, um, Let's see here. So, so, or sorry, the, the length of this would certainly not change. Sorry, I'm doing our, the, the angle first. Um, but the magnitude of R3 definitely does not change, right? Because no matter how much R3 slides in this slot, it's always constrained to move in that slot. And the distance from that center uh, circle to there is always the radius of that circle. So do we know the magnitude of R3? You better believe we know the magnitude of R3. It is the radius of this circle defined by the center of that circle to there. Okay, that's another reason we used it because its magnitude is never going to change. Okay, do we know the angle? No, we don't. Okay, this, you know, that, that angle is going to change as it slides in the slot as R2 changes. Okay, so as R2, theta 2 changes, that's going to change. So that's our first question mark we don't know. Okay, now the magnitude of R4, do we know the distance between here and here? Well, we should. Yeah, it's a check mark because that's a fixed point on R4 and that's a fixed point on R4 as well. And that's a trick. You know, if you can't visualize it, just pretend there's an appendage sticking out here that, that encompasses that. But, of course, this point moves because, like I said, if you take a, a link and you cut a slot in it and you throw the link, of course, the slot's going to move with it. And, therefore, the center of that slot is going to move with it. So that's certainly on R4. So we can measure that. We know that magnitude. Its angle, we do not know. Okay, as, R, as theta 2 changes, this angle is going to change as this slides in and out. That R4 is going to rotate, and that, that vector that moves with R4 is going to rotate. Okay? And, and probably this is what we care about. We probably have the output motor or something stuck on this pin, and, and we're going to give it some input theta 2, and we want to know what theta 4 is. So that's, you know, even though we have a question mark on the angle of theta 3, you're probably not going to care about that or use that in any useful way, but you just have to solve it. So again, we found a vector loop. It should all be true. It's two equations. It's two unknowns. And one of the unknowns is actually something we actually care about, okay? How much uh, link four is going to rotate, okay? Great. So that's a good example. Okay. So now uh, here is another example, all right? Um, Okay, and uh, this example, um, okay, uh, again, uh, since these are rounded, this is fixed to ground, okay, and oh boy, <laughs> you can't see that this is rounded, so <laughs> you'd almost have to ask someone if this is a sliding joint or not, because it's unclear, they've covered up the roundedness up here, and according to convention, this could be a sliding thing, but trust me, it's not. Okay, and another way you could deduce this is you could use Kutzbach and think about it. And, uh, of course, if this could slide and this was rolling sliding contact, uh, you know, there'd be a higher mobility than one. 
and uh, you'd be in real trouble. Um, and, and so that you know, usually these are going to have mobility of one, so they can have one input, and you can drive the whole thing with one motor. Um, but uh, anyway, so if you were on an exam, you didn't have a professor around, and, and this was covered, you could assume this was fixed just by that rationale. But uh, yeah, this one's a little tricky. I, I, I think on an exam, we'd make sure we'd show that this is indeed rounded, and so this is fixed. That's not a sliding joint. So the only, so there's one link here, plus one, and there's this link here with a circle. That is a circle. You know it's a circle because I drew an X or a cross, okay, and that's the center of that circle. And then, aha, we see an X and a cross here. What do you think is the center? What do you think that's the center of? Well, you know, is it the center of this circle? No, that circle doesn't matter. I could have, I could have just erased this and drawn Mickey Mouse's head here. This could be any shape you want. What's important is that the circle that this is touching, that's this circle. It's, it's, and it's also not the center thing. It's, it's not the outside one. It's not the center thing because it's not a slot. It's just a rigid link that could be any shape, you know, it's not a slot. It's just uh, one circular body touching another external circular body, and so this circle center is that. And you can kind of see that, it makes sense. If you drew a radius and swept it out here, that would be the circle uh, center of that, okay? So again, this is kind of a trick question. This is misleading that the back shape here could be anything, okay? It's this circle that matters and that's the center. Okay, so with that in mind, with that clarification of everything, knowing this is a three-link thing, um, draw your vector loops and uh, put me on pause, okay? Okay, so I'm assuming you did your vector loop, you put me on pause, let me uh, give you a possible solution, okay? So the obvious solution, you know, the, one of the obvious things is you've got two pin joints and they're both link one. So you want to connect those and call it R1. That's going to capture the motion of R1. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, here we could point from this uh, center of this circle to this uh, cross right there. Okay. That would be two points on R2. So that's obvious. Again, a pin to some obvious point and you know these are both fixed to two, and so they capture two. So great, and you, you need at least one to capture two because that's going to be the input. And then, you know, aha, remember, if you ever have external contact of circle inside a circle touching, you're going to want to point from the centers of those circles. It will also, if it's, you know, if it's, uh, oh, sorry, did I say external? Okay, if it was external, you'd point to them, and if it's internal, you'd point to them. In this case, it's internal. This circle's inside this but you still point from the center to there, okay? And this one you would not call R3 or R2 or R1. It's not capturing the motion of either one. Like I said, the book would call it R23 or R32. You can call it whatever you want as long as it's not 1, 2, or 3 in this case. You can call R8, R9, or probably most logically R4, okay, on an exam. Um, and, uh, okay, so great. So you followed that uh, rule. Uh, for internal contact of, of these circles. And then the next obvious one is you have to close the loop. Um, and, and yeah, notice these loops cross over each other and everything, so it's not like a nice circular loop or anything, but uh, th that doesn't matter. So t but to close the loop, to go back to where you started, um, you'd do this one. And you would rightfully call this R3 because no matter what the shape of 3 is, the only shape that matters is this circle, and the center of that circle is here. So obviously this point is attached to 3. If I moved 3, of course this edge would move with 3, and that's the edge of a circle, and therefore that circle would move with it, and the center of the circle would move with it. So if you have a hard time visualizing this point belongs on 3 and moves with 3, just draw an extension there that encompasses it and you can kind of see in your mind how it would move with it. So that's a point on 3, and that's a point on 3. That will capture the theta 3 of this, so you better label that 3. Okay, so this is all well labeled. It's a nice closed loop. Um, let's see if it works. Okay, let's see, where did we start here? It looks like we start here. It, again, it doesn't matter. You can start anywhere in the vector loop, and you can go in any direction. We're going to go this way. So it looks like plus from how we drew it, plus plus negative, plus, plus, plus negative, you can see there, okay? And now, do we know the magnitude of R1? Yes, we do, we could measure it. It doesn't change as theta two changes, we're good. Do we know the angle? 
yeah, in this case, it looks like it's straight across, so it's zero. We know that. It's not going to change as theta 2 changes. Remember, the motor is stuck to this. Okay, and we obviously want the output to be this guy, 3, because that's the only output that we care about, right, here. Um, okay, so R2, do we know the magnitude? Yes, we could measure that point. It doesn't change with respect to that. Uh, the theta, it's the input. Okay, if you do Kutzbach, this is a mobility of 1, so there's one input. Okay, and so that's good. That's certainly the input. And then R23, do we know the magnitude of R23? The question is, yes, or the answer is, yes, we do. We know the magnitude. We know this length. And what is it? Well, remember, if you have an internal circle sliding and rolling on an external circle, internal circle on an external circle, and you connect them, you can know that this length is always the radius of the external, the large circle, minus the radius of the internal small circle. And that will be the length of this, okay? And please convince yourself of that. It's the large radius minus the small radius, and that's, that's this, and we know that. And we could measure that, and we'd be given that, okay? Do we know its angle? No, we don't. That will obviously change. And, and what is its angle? Since there's the tail, we draw a horizontal all the way around there. That will change, okay? Okay, do we know R3? Yes, we do. Uh, this is a point on there. This is a point on three. We could just measure it, and there it is, okay? Um, that would be given to us. We would know that magnitude, just like we'd know the magnitude of any two fixed points, okay? We could measure it, it'd be given, and it's obviously not going to change as theta 2 changes. As theta 2 changes, as it rocks up and down, this magnitude is never going to sh shorten or lengthen. Of course it wouldn't, okay? It's two fixed points, or it's two points on, a, on a, the same body, and they're moving together. Okay? So they're not going to change length, okay? So, and now the question is, do we know the angle of R3? Do, which, by the way, since this is a tail, you draw a horizontal, you go all the way around there. Would we know how that angle is changing? No, we don't. And do we care about that? Yes, we do. That's, we care very much how theta 3 moves. Like, obviously, if this was a real mechanism we cared about, the input would be stuck on here. We'd want to define theta 2, how this rotates. And then we'd want to, you know, attach some output thing here, and, and the output would be uh, theta 3. That's what we would care about. So good. We've drawn a nice vector loop. We have two equations, two unknowns, uh, two question marks in there. We could solve for it, and the thing we're solving for we actually care about. Okay, so now this example here, okay, we have, um, uh, you know, Again, this is rounded up here, so this is grounded and held fixed. It's not a sliding joint. Uh, this guy's rounded here and held fixed there, so this is not a sliding joint. That's fixed to ground. Um, here we have a link four on a pin where this is ground. And now we have a prism joint in here. This bar kind of is forced to only slide up and down. You can imagine a hole drilled in there. This slides in. And here's a nice link, okay? Now, if, if I was doing this on an exam as a red herring, I may actually put a cross down here to be evil because you would think, oh, okay, let's see here. That must be the center of this circle. And maybe it is. Maybe it's the center of that circle. Or maybe it's the center of this circle. Or maybe it's the center of the central one. Uh, you wouldn't know, but like you certainly wouldn't use it because it would be a nonsense thing. Link two, I just threw out as a curved thing. I could have drawn this any shape I want. Remember, there's no rolling of circles externally or internally, and there's no pins or slots or anything, anything sliding in. This is literally just a rigid link, and it would be the exact same thing if I just had a straight link connecting these or a link that looked like anything you wanted. It would be the exact same kinematic. So um, this is an example where if I had put a cross here, I might trap some students to unwittingly point to it in a vector loop just because they think they always need to point to crosses where that cross would be nonsense uh, even if it was the center of this or this or, or the center uh, it would you know you're not sliding it it's not external or internal contact so it's it's a red herring one okay but I didn't draw it because I'm nice okay but I might be mean on an exam okay so put me on pause and uh, draw the vector loop for this okay so we're going to assume you did that, um, and I'm going to draw a vector loop here. Okay, I'm going to connect these. Okay, those are obviously R1. These these two points are obviously fixed on R1. Okay, 
Uh, these are obviously R2, that's a point in R2, that's a point in R2, and that's going to capture the rotation of 2, whether it's a circle or bent or straight or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay? And then um, we really care about the sliding in here, so I better draw a sliding pin to 3 that, that somehow tracks the translation of 3 here and also the rotation of 3, so that's just some arbitrary point on there. And then I'm going to connect here. And the reason I didn't pull this all the way down and go up there, I could have done that. I could have pulled this arrow all the way down to there and then connected there. But the reason I didn't is because I want a nice 90 degree angle there. Remember when you've got something sliding in a slot um, with a pin like this, go back to the examples, the, the rules of thumb I gave you. You, you usually want to make your life easy with a pi over 2. Now, the other way would totally work. It would, it would give you a correct answer, but um, this will make your life a little easier. Okay? Okay, so, um, okay, and, and just to, to clarify here, where this is pointing, this is not a point stuck, this is, you know, so th the tail of this is stuck on R3, but where this is pointing is not stuck on R3. This will always be, per this is a point stuck on R4, okay? Because you always want to maintain this pi over 2 thing, okay? Um, if, you tr if you tried to go all the way down there and stick it to 3 or stick it anywhere on 3 and go up to 4, um, you may not, uh, you may find it, it, it's, it's a little trickier. What we want to do here is not stick this to 3, but have this basically stuck to 4 so that when we connect that point to that point, those are two points stuck on 4, and that well describes 4, right? Because, you know, as 4 moves, you want that point and some point fixed on 4. Okay, but we want to maintain this pi over 2 angle. So you can imagine as this changes, as, as you rotate theta 2 and this slides in and out, you're going to still maintain this pi over 2 thing, but this is going to move, and so points on 3 are going to move right past this. That's not a point fixed on 3. That's a point fixed on 4. You should think in your mind the way I have this set up. Okay? But you should still label this R3 because it's still going to capture the rotation of link 3, okay? It's still, you better not label this some random thing like R8 or something because it's not just one of these vectors that's necessary to, to use. It actually captures the rotation of 3 even though one end is stuck to 3 and the other end is not stuck to 3, it's stuck to 4, okay? Um, and it's, it's not, uh, you know, it, it, it will move with 3 and, and always be, this will always be parallel to these two lines, of course, but it, it will not, uh, you know, these points will, will move up and down, and that will always maintain a pi over 2 angle. Okay, so a little tricky. Okay, but let's uh, walk around here. Okay. Um, okay, so if we start uh, here and walk this way, again, we can start anywhere, we can walk anyway. This is plus R1, plus R2, plus R3, plus R4, so they're all plus, okay, just because of how I drew the arrows. I could have drawn them in any way. Okay, well, let's check it. R1, the magnitude of this, uh, we, of course, know, as well as the angle. We just measure it, or I guess measuring is maybe not the right way to think about it, but um, it, you just think it doesn't change as theta 2 changes. As theta 2 changes, the ground remains totally locked in place, and nothing changes there, okay? Okay, R2. Uh, the magnitude, these are just two fixed points on the moving link. Okay, as theta 2 changes, that, those distance is not going to change. We could know it, we could measure it, there it is. Okay, we know it. Uh, the input is, is the angle, so theta 2 uh, from there to there, that's the input i. Okay, and then uh, the magnitude of 3, do we know that? Well, if, if this and this were fixed on 3, if those were two fixed points on 3, then we would know it. But we don't know it because this is fixed on 3, but this is fixed on 4. And as theta 2 changes, that distance will expand or contract. Okay? That's what I'm saying. If, if this was fixed on 3, then if, if we move this up, this, this whole vector would just kind of move up and it wouldn't change its relative length. But because this fixed point is fixed on 4 and that's fixed on 3, that can change length and we don't know it. So that's a question mark. Okay, and we also um, don't really know the angle here. Okay, so if you draw the horizontal here and go around here, theta 3 we don't know, 
but it's constrained. So we don't just put a question mark there. We put a constraint, C, and we, because we realize this angle is always locked to be pi, 3 pi, or sorry, is always locked to be 90 degrees, pi over 2, okay? And so you can see here the relationship between theta 4 and, and theta 3, okay? So remember, since here's the tail of theta 4, you do a dotted line here, there's theta 4 plus 3 pi over 2 will be the angle of theta 3. Okay, remember that theta 3 is the tail horizontal all the way around, and theta 4 is this angle there to there. So theta 4 plus 3 pi over 2 gets the full theta 3. And those will always be linked or constrained. Okay? Okay, so now do you know the magnitude of R4? Yes, you do. This is a point fixed on 4, and that's a point fixed on 4. So as theta 2 changes, does this length ever change? No, it, like it, it, the arrow might move up or down or whatever, but the, the distance between the two stays the same. You can measure it. Um, and then the angle of that, again, that definitely does change. And that's probably what you care about, right? Even though, you know, the length of this angle would change, you probably don't care too much about it. Maybe you do. Maybe you care about how much this moves in and out. If there's some output here, you care about, maybe you care about that. But the most likely thing is the input would be some motor here and some output here. You care about how that rotates. And so, so either way, you know, it's likely that we have, we're solving for the outputs that we actually care about. Okay? Okay, so... Um, all right, and so again, we have two equations, two unknowns, or the way you can think about it is three, two of these equations and a third equation with three unknowns constrained in there, okay? Um, and you could try different vector loops and see, see if they work. You might actually find, if you did connect this to the bottom there and go up there, that that's uh, unsolvable because you wouldn't know uh, the angle of theta 3, you know, um, and uh, the angle of theta 4, and it wouldn't be as cleanly constrained. But th there may be some way to do it. I, I don't know, you can play around with it. Maybe, maybe you did connect it and found some solution uh, that you could show me. But uh, like I said, there's, there's many ways to do these. This is just one possible way to do it and think about it, to get what you want. Okay, so here's another one. Um, uh, in this one, you know, this isn't so skeleton diagram -y. Um, you can see this is not a sliding joint because it's curved here. This is actually locked to there. Um, this, is, this is one big fixed link that's locked there. And the reason we drew it this way is to just show that this link 3 can slide back and forth. This is just a big prison joint. I mean, we could have just gotten rid of this thing. Could have gotten rid of this thing and just had it slide there on a prison joint. Then here's a pin in a slot and two moves. Okay, so with that, see what, what you can do. And again, there's a couple, there's many different solutions for this too that could work. Um, but, you know, see if you can find one. And like I said, if you find one that's different than mine, that doesn't mean you're wrong. You know, as, as long as you can find a correct vector loop and have two question marks that you care about, you're, you're correct. Okay? All right, so put me on pause. Okay, if you have already, you know, if, if you did that and you have your solution, I'm going to give you my solution. Okay, the two obvious ones is pointing from there to there. Okay, um, that, that obviously captures, those are the two pins, that's what you always do, and it obviously captures our two. Okay, uh, another uh, more obvious one just from following the principles I taught you is since you have a pin in a slot, you want some kind of vector that is parallel to the slot so it captures how much it, it, it moves. And in this case, you wouldn't want to call it R3 because it doesn't capture 3. What, what 3 does is 3 just translates back and forth. So, you know, this does not capture anything. This just captures how the pin moves in the slot, and that the pin doesn't have its own, and the pin is part of two. So you could name it R2-3, because it interfaces between two and three, or you can do R3-2, or you could do R2-D2, or you could do R, you know, anything you want, right? Um, R8, as long as it's not two, three, or one, okay? And then we went down here to the middle here, because we obviously want another vector that does capture three, because all three does is, is translates in this direction. You want something that's just right in that direction to capture how three moves, okay? And, and again, we put it to there so that it would be a nice 90 degree angle. And, you know, this guy, um, 
you know, you'd like to think of this point here stuck on three, but this point is stuck on one. Okay, so a cleaner, you know, you might think, well, let's pull this back to there, and then, then it actually looks like it's stuck on one, and then you move it.